Welcome to the Music and Memories Podcast with your host, Vince Moreno. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Music and Memories. I'm your host, Vince Moreno. Before we get into this thing, I just want to remind you guys to go share this thing. If you guys are listening, I appreciate you. I want you to share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, or wherever you can share it. Um, just get the word out. We, we love having new listeners come in, and hopefully people are enjoying the stories that we got here on Music and Memories. And today I got another guitar picker friend of mine here. I was a bass player too, and singer. Uh, I got my buddy Sean Carson in the house. Hello, Vince. Hello, Sean, you're way across the table. Hello. <laughs> I first met Sean, um, I don't think we met before Neil McCoy's gig, but we, we, were, both, we were both on Neil McCoy's gig, and that was actually a return gig for you, because you were, you were there in the heyday of the 90s for I Neil McCoy. I was. I started with Neil, I think, in 1990 or 91, and he, uh, I came in just to see, he, he'd only had his record deal for uh, less than a year. So it was great for me to see uh, that whole growth and then everything that was happening was like we're all experiencing it for the first time right. because none of us had been to that level before. We were all bar band guys, you know, yeah. and, and it was great because we so were just, you were there for the uphill climb. And I was. And then it got to a point to where it, he was as hotter than a firecracker. And it was like, my goodness. I mean, I'll give you a good example. We filmed um, the Deo video in Louisiana at a at arena at an arena civic center or something like that and this is long before cell phones but i remember going out to the pay phone to call my mother and she couldn't pay hear phone. me she could not hear me over the phone because all of these people were screaming for neil Dang. and it was it was ridiculous crazy ridiculous well, that, that tells you what era that was when you're talking about pay phones right there <laughs> yeah. atnt yeah now nowadays it's like yeah we, we did a, a facetime chat or whatever and <laughs> exactly you know? yeah 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 but that's crazy. Um, you you, uh, you were there for how many years? I was there uh, the first time. The first time I was there for I think I think five years each time. Uh, close oh, yeah. to five years each time. Yeah. And, and the first time you're playing like like rhythm guitar or something, right, or something? Or? No. Well, I was hired on as a kind of utility guy, and then Glenn Schenkel was the steel guitar player and guitar player at the time, and I was playing acoustic, and then Glenn. Uh, I think the story would only be kind of humorous if you knew Glenn Schenkel, but <laughs> he just one day said, oh, I'll just go ahead and play it. You know, uh, like he just wanted to sit at his steel guitar. Oh, I guess, really? But he, was, he was a great guitar player. Yeah, I, yeah. I learned a lot from him. And I used to go to his house with Kathy and Jam there in Longview. And he he got me uh, turned on to Stevie Ray Vaughan, actually. So. Uh, um, so you said Longview, Texas. Uh, Neil's always been based out of there. And and. How in the heck did you even come across that gig? If I mean, you're from Canada, right? I am from Canada originally, and it's oh, it's a, hey. oh hey. don't you know where it snows every day, <laughs> and as soon as you cross the border, there's moose and buffalo. <laughs> mooses, <laughs> mooses is no. It's uh, I love telling this story because uh, even to this day, uh, from time to time, when I when I I mentioned it to Neil, man, just thank you for picking me. I mean, of all the guitar players on this planet, I, either I was the cheapest or the only one <laughs> that you could. I don't know what the deal was, but. I was in Canada, and uh, to back it up a little bit, I had heard If I Built You a Fire, I think was the video that I heard on TV. Oh, yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, uh, who is this singer? Because he came out with his baritone voice. And that was a time when a lot of the singers then had a, kind of a thinner voice and more of a commercial. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably not explaining this right, but Neil had that depth and that baritone. I thought, oh, my God, because I love that kind of singing. Right. I thought, wow, finally, here's a guy, you know, that that's hip and he's got this baritone voice. Yeah. And I go out and I catch this video. Uh, and at that time, I was uh, part of a TV show in Canada that we would film every Monday and Tuesday, I think it was. But we would end early, like six, seven o'clock at night. OK. Just so happened on the way home from that TV taping, it was winter time again, right in Canada, like July, and <laughs> yeah. and on the radio I hear appearing tonight at Cook County Slough, Neil McCoy, and I'm thinking Neil McCoy, that's the video I saw. That's that dude, yeah. So we Donnie Peronto and I, who I know you know Donnie yeah. Peronto, he was Neil's fiddle player. We go to this Cook County Saloon, this nightclub in, in Calgary, or was that Edmonton? I don't know. It's your story. You, so it can be whatever, first. right? I asked you first. It can be. It can be wherever I want it to be, right? <laughs> yeah, it can be. Well, in my fairy tale, it is. 
cloud with rhinestone horses. And Hell, it could be in America for like here. America. <laughs> it was Edmonton, America. Edmonton, Alberta. It only, it only snows some of the time. But we go there, and and I remember this like it was yesterday. We put our hand on the door to go in, and they're, they're playing this Western swing music. And I'm in Canada growing up on, on Western swing music, but no one was really playing it right. in Canada. Yeah, yeah. It's based out of Texas. It's you mostly know, polkas so. and shit, right? Oh, polkas right. in the snow. Here's the snow dot polka for you. <laughs> but uh, so we walk in and they're playing Johnny Bush, who's one of my favorite Texas singers. And I'm like, oh, my God. And unfortunately, there was nobody there to see him. Oh, really? it was like one of those nights where it was 30 below and lots of snow and people that stayed home. And Donnie Prawn and I were like, who what is going on? Who, who are these guys? <laughs> who are these guys? Yeah. Please take us with you. So. We just ended up talking to Neil that night, and uh, the next day he said, what are you guys doing tomorrow? We're not doing a thing, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> and he, we came down to the club because they were rehearsing for this new album that he was putting out. Um, what, what Was it I Built You Far? Was that the name of his first record? That was, think, uh, no, that was, um, that was on the first record. I can't remember the name of the... I think the first record was called At This Moment, I think. I think you're right. I yes, think so. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So they were learning some songs off of that, and we went down there and, and jammed with them. And This was like at a nightclub then? Or? It was, yeah, okay. Cook County Saloon. Oh, okay. And during the day, they just went in there. Oh, I'm sorry, the night before, he got us up to play. And Don and I were like, oh, my God, we were throwing every hot lick we knew. Yeah, yeah. Like in the, before the, before yeah. the first chorus, right? We were spent. <laughs> and so, okay, I'm out. <laughs> what do we do for the rest of the song? <laughs> and we just, it just, it's kind of weird. I've never even really experienced this even after that, because uh, that was so many years ago. But we just all clicked. The, the band and I and, and Donnie, of course, was there. And we all just clicked. And I met Neil and Les Martinez, who was Neil's road manager then and still now. Okay, hold on. So the band was probably Lynn Massey, Lynn right? Lynn Massey, Lauren the band O'Neill. leader. Lauren O'Neill. And uh, Steve Siegler had to be Steve on Siegler okay. and Glenn Shankle. Okay. So those were the original four, right? The, I mean, yes. And then uh, Les was playing acoustic guitar right. some at right. the time. Yeah. And it was getting to the point to where Les was transitioning more into the road manager spot. Yeah. And it was getting to be more of that happening than he had time for. So the timing of it all was great. Yeah. I was young. I was single. I had already played every bar there was in Canada. Yeah. A thousand You're ready for times. that next step. You know. Ready for the next step. And you know, my chops were up because I was playing five, six nights a week. So, yeah. I mean, it was just the perfect time. And I think, you know, I kid about why did he pick me, but I think he saw all of that. You know, here's a young guy that's got no ties to, yeah. to anything. Well, I mean, he probably saw that and then that, that show, you know, the chemistry that y'all probably had right yeah, off the bat too. Because it wasn't the talent. <laughs> <laughs> no but no it was uh you're being it, humble it was there was no being uncomfortable yeah. I, I like i've auditioned for for plenty of gigs and it you know you get the gig and you're still uncomfortable yep. for a little while yeah I, I know you've had a ton of artist gigs you know what that's like yeah. and, but with neil it was like I mean, not that he didn't get on to you when you messed up. He he did, but oh, it was never. Oh, did he? Ever. It was never in a mean way. I felt it was always like he he knew you could do better. So yeah. why aren't you? Like I, he actually told me that one time. You know, like, you know, I you know I ride you so hard, and I said, I said no, but why? <laughs> and he was like, because uh, what do you say? I like to break you down and make you better, or something like that. You know, was, yeah. in other words, uh, uh, pushing you because I know you can do it, or something like that. Because. Uh, there, there was a, when I came into the gig, there was that song Hero. I don't know if you remember that song or not. It was all I piano do. driven yep. and B flat with all the black keys and all this stuff. And I've told this story a few times to other people where it's like, God, I was so just, you know, I didn't, we, when I came in, I didn't, we didn't have rehearsal or nothing. And, Oh, is that right? Uh, Hodag was our was my first show. Oh my Hodag. god! And that's where Neil is the reigning king. Yeah, he's it. like Elvis there. And I remember when, when Neil called me, he said, all right, so you're not going to, uh, you're not going to come out here in the first two weeks and then start missing your family and all that and want to go home. Are you? I said, yeah, probably. <laughs> I've never been on the road before. And then he said, uh, all right, well, there's that. And then, uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, the first your first show is going to, we're not going to have rehearsal now. We're not going to have time for rehearsal because we're off for two weeks after we pick you up in Tucson. I wow. Said, I said, okay. So <clears throat> I went to Lauren's trailer in, uh, not Ingram. Kerrville. Where, uh, no, uh, he was still in Ingram at that time. South Texas, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It was like it was far from. I just remember it was far from uh, Longview. <laughs> anyway, so so they had been out all summer, you know. And then Lauren's bringing all the band and everybody to his house, you know. And his wife Kimberly's like, his wife Kimberly's like, 
Oh, so you've been gone the whole two weeks you're going to be home? Uh, you got everybody with you in the van? <laughs> like, how about some alone time, you know? Anyway, so yeah, so Neil's like, oh, we're not going to have any time for rehearsal. Uh, basically, rehearsal is going to be at soundcheck for you. And, oh, oh, and it's at, at this, it's at Hodag. And I'm like, what's that? And, you know, it's, oh, it's a country oh, music Oh, so you festival. weren't even aware of it? No, I didn't know what, a, oh, what the hell goodness. a Hodag was. Yeah. And so I he, still don't know what a Hodag yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, oh, it's a big country. You know, it'll be about 30,000 people there. I was like, okay, cool. Okay. And he's like... Okay, so no rehearsal. Oh, by the way, we're filming a live DVD that night, too. And I'm like... Oh, my goodness. Good Lord. I'm like, anything else? <laughs> wow. <laughs> anything else? So, um, <clears throat> I, don't, I, remember, I don't remember why I started talking about that, but... Uh, um, well, you know, I was saying a second ago about being there and watching the whole growth with Neil, which, oh, yeah. which was great. I mean, I, I everyone was excited. I remember his wife yeah, that- being excited and... His father-in-law at the time, you know, rest his soul. He was a great oh, yeah, coach. Yeah. Coach, yeah, he was a great guy. But um, so he says that the next day, what are y'all doing? And you're like, no, he yeah, says, y'all want to so, come with us? Yeah. I mean, just, uh, and, just like that? And I remember going there and it was just a weird feeling. It was like I knew something was up and it was like I had some thinking to do because I was making pretty good money in Canada. I mean, my dad, uh, you know, at that time was still playing, and he'd already kind of laid the groundwork for our family name because he, he. Yeah, because you guys are like a. a f- we were a family band. Family band and, there, and right? Quite, you know, my dad and my mother had quite an established, successful band, yeah. and so then it just kind of passed off to me, and it was easy kind of for me to get gigs because I just you on, like had a built-in following and everything. Yeah, right? I'm yeah. grandson. I, I had to do a bunch of the old man's tunes, but yeah. I mean, it was it was work. Yeah, yeah. So. And I had a pretty good band going, and I thought, yeah, but, you know, this yeah. could go on for another five years. Like, I mean, I got to strike while the iron's hot sure. and get down there. But anyway, so here's a funny story about, speaking of growth, <laughs> we traveled in a motorhome and a horse trailer. I was just going to ask you, were you guys in Lynn's uh, motorhome? <laughs> were we ever? I got heard stories about that thing. And the horse trailer that leaked. and <laughs> It was a horse trailer? <laughs> Yeah, yeah that just right. <laughs> so, I didn't know that part of it. Then we get then we get a bus, and it was a death trap on wheels. Right, Willie Nelson retired the bus in like '69 or something. Oh my god, we got it, <laughs> and we traveled around on that. And we got these headaches from all the diesel fumes, and our clothes stunk and every night. You know, but we were we were happy. But anyway, sure. So then Neil starts doing really well, and he gets. A brand new Prevo bus. I mean, brand new. I mean, that was a big deal. Yeah. So we were in Kent. We were in St. Louis. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Just saying that name's funny. <laughs> and Neil and Les sit down with us. Uh, we were a wild bunch. Let me just put it that way. And I was the ringleader. Well, of, I was say you were you were drinking because you don't drink now. I but. don't drink at all. And this is this story I'm about to tell you is one of a million and one <laughs> as to why I don't drink. That's anymore. why you don't drink. <laughs> so but let's just say that I gave Neil plenty of motive and opportunity to fire me. Why he didn't? I just I to this day I just don't know. But anyway, <laughs> we have this big sit down meeting. Listen, he says, I got, this isn't Lynn's motorhome. This isn't Willie's old bus. This is a million dollar coach. I don't want no smoking on it. I don't want no drinking on it. We're all, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Of course not. Oh, you my know? gosh. And no uh, people on there that aren't family or friends. You know, I don't want no parties on there. We we got you, boss. Yeah. I mean, oh. See, even telling the story, <laughs> I'm getting in trouble. That's thunder if y'all can hear that in yeah. the background. <laughs> Let's fix storming over but, here. But uh, so the... <laughs> first night, Vince, the first night in St. Louis, I meet this gal. Hey. <laughs> want to come see a bus? <laughs> you want to come see a bus? Oh, no. <laughs> sure I do. Do you mind if I bring a friend? Not at all. No, I would love that. <laughs> I would love that, actually. So we go to the bus. Next thing you know, I put a knock on the door, and there's like four more people. Yeah, just be quiet. Come on up here, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was never a good drinker anyway, you know, back, I weigh 110 pounds now, I was 90 pounds back then. Oh, God. And they bring out the Jack Daniels. Oh, my goodness. That was my drink of choice back then. Yeah. And I get hammered. And I wake up at 6.30 in the morning to Les Martinez, our road manager, he's a great big guy, yeah. shaking me. I'm asleep on the couch. 
and he's saying every cuss word that he knows at me because <laughs> I have trashed the bus. Oh no! There's cigarettes was, all over. Was, were they all like in the hotel room? They were or in something? the hotel room. Okay. Yeah, and okay. I yeah. So and I left the light on, which wasn't plugged in, so I, I drained one of the batteries. Oh no! And there was beer bottles everywhere. There was cigarettes out in the sink. <gasps> There were shoes, there was clothes, there was wallets, purses, <laughs> and just me. <laughs> oh, at least everybody left. <laughs> so he said, Neil is on his way down here. We're leaving at 7 o'clock. So I had spick and span, Windex, aroma, through everything I could think of to clean this bus. Oh, no. And Neil gets on the bus. Right in, he comes down early. Well, not that that's going to matter. Yeah, it smells right. like a bar room in there. It looks yeah. like a bar room. The band just left. It looks like, you know. Yeah. There's clothes everywhere. And I start thinking, well, there's clothes here. Is there still people here? Like, yeah. Like, start looking at the bus. Yeah, start, start looking around. So, but anyway, he, uh, he was more than upset. And in my hungover state, I have to go to the back room and talk to him and say, man, it, it'll never happen again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And, and you're like, hey, go. <laughs> <laughs> Hold still, no. <laughs> so that, so that, don't move the bus yet. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, of course, like a week later, I did the same thing. Oh, <laughs> Just in no. a different city. By yourself? I mean, Lord, and, myself, that, Lord yeah, and I they were pitching no, in on that? I didn't need no help. And I actually put a cigarette burn in the, in the, in the seat at the table. And I, I, I sat at that same spot for a oh, week, you know? <laughs> God. But, yeah, so he, you know, just... You know, I don't understand some of the things that have happened to me, like uh, why I why like I got away with that or whatever. Yeah, and why I've got fired from some gigs when I thought everything was going great. Going, yes, flying this straight and narrow. <laughs> Next day, it's like ah, uh, so <laughs> so yeah. You know how you were praying on the bus the other day. <laughs> this That's isn't working out. <laughs> yeah, for who? <laughs> yeah, it's working out great for me. <laughs> oh my gosh! But anyway, I got. I want to tell a story. Speaking of. Being on the road. Yeah. Well, that's what it's about. We were in London, England, okay? And we had... Damn, how'd you get the bus over there? <laughs> Did you trust the bus there, too? Was it a double-decker? <laughs> Neil will never find me yeah, here. Yeah, he'll never find the cigarette burn here. And we had this old Mercedes van, and the, the front of it was blocked off. To like where, a Sprinter type of thing? Or? Like a Sprinter type okay. van, yeah. And the back had no windows in it, and that's where all our equipment was and our luggage right. and everything. Yeah. And... London, England, they drive on the other side of the road, but we had this driver. We had this driver who was an alcoholic. And so he could have been in the band. <laughs> he could have been in the band. What do you play? That doesn't yeah, matter. That doesn't matter. You could drive. <laughs> but he would literally drive all over the place and just he would get us to the gig. I don't know how. I like we we couldn't sleep. We didn't dare sleep a wink after the show because this guy was just like smoking and drinking for eight hours straight. Like, oh, dang. dude, how you doing? But anyway, we're right downtown London, England, and we stop at a red light, and somebody knocks on the side of the van. And my dad, for some reason, starts panicking and starts freaking out. He goes, "Just go, just drive." Run, right, tell you know. Yeah. Guy takes off. <laughs> the next red lights. We're in, we're in downtown. There's a million red. There's a million lights. Oh, all yeah. red at this point. Right. We stop. There's one side of the van, other side of the van. My dad's like. F it, just go. I know it's a red light, but I'll pay the fine. Just go. Right, tell the guy steps on it, and we're cruising through downtown London, England, and people are banging on the van. And my dad says they're trying to kill us. They don't like Canadians here. And we're looking at my dad, going, "Where are you getting this information what? from? <laughs> how the hell? How the hell got here? Canadians." <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we finally stop with the driver. Says, I gotta check this out. And right about then, this guy rides up on a bicycle, and his hair is a mess, and he's got a suitcase. I believe you boys dropped this somewhere's back. Oh, no. And we look back, and there's like five guys <laughs> running with suitcases and amps and guitars. My suitcase got tire tracks over the back doors that come open like five miles ago. <laughs> People are running. Oh, wow. Carrying the suit. Right, tell us you mate. And I'm like, oh, my God. And they kept up with it the whole time. Yeah, they're running it like. <laughs> <laughs> just go. Just go. So we, the reason we were there is they have every year. I don't know about now. This is back in the mid 80s. They would have <laughs> Holiday Inn would have these corporate parties all over the world. And this one was in London. And yeah. so we go there to play at this Holiday Inn corporate party and they had all kinds of bands they had a reggae band there they had a jazz band from france and they had us representing american country music well again 
back. I drank a lot back. So you're then. talking about this is with your dad's band. This with my dad's oh, okay. band. Yes, I'm so that was, sorry. That's a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> the segue was coming. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, shit, I, I don't even know how I'm gonna. I can't keep up. I don't know how the listeners are. <laughs> Bitch is going. So we're done with Neil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> we really got to get your Tourette's under control. Man. Then I tiled this floor, this woman's kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, I'm washing a car. <laughs> Neil's car? Nope. Your dad's car? No. 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 Why would you think that? <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. That's that's funny. I was just going. Oh, I thought you were over there with Neil. <laughs> this was with my dad's band. <laughs> And we are playing around this pool where they have synchronized swimming. Right behind my guitar amp where they've got us set up was the stand of what they felt was American food. They had hot dogs. You <laughs> what know what's coming. That's like and going to Canada. <laughs> yes. Where's the mooses, eh? <laughs> what you think is a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the felt on here? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. nothing. Just eat it. Just so eat it. <laughs> behind my amplifier was this stand, this table that represented American country music and had hot dogs on it, cheeseburgers, Budweiser, and Jack Daniels. Oh, okay. Well, so they halfway got it right. In between the songs, I keep nipping this Jack Daniels. Uh-huh. And we had a female singer with us, Don Hetherington, who went on the road with us and she grew up in a very strict religious home she had never had a drop of alcohol and i'm like a little bit won't hurt you <laughs> i'll fix that shit <laughs> i got her hammered on jack daniels like in five minutes i'm like oh yeah and, Funny she thing, had, and she was our featured guest that night she was like she was kind of a an up-and-coming rising oh, singer yeah, yeah. she couldn't sing a note she's hanging off the mic stand blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. but anyway they then they bring us a tray of champagne sure we'll take that too why not <laughs> Don Hetherington and I go to the edge of, pool, edge of the pool to watch the synchronized swimming, and she drops her wine glass on the edge of the pool that her breaks and goes into the pool. All right, tell everyone out of the pool now. Everyone oh, out of the pool, no. evacuate. And my dad could have shot us. We're like, there we are at this corporate holiday inn party, and they're evacuating the pool because the <laughs> band's drunk. <laughs> Oh, I know why you segued to this. You're, you're talking about how you got away with a lot of shit when you're yes. touring. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. <laughs> okay, it's all starting to make sense now. Like uh, things, things I got away with, and I'm still alive. Hey, Vince, you know what? I know that you do this podcast and you have guests on here, but I just want to take a second, and I mean this when I say it. All right, I know we're friends. Good segue. Good and segue. I know we go back a long way, but I'm actually a fan, man. I'm a fan of yours. Thanks, man. I I have. Uh, done a gig or two with you downtown yeah. and yeah. it's my kind of music and not only that but just sitting out front it's like um i'm a big fan of one song after the other i Hell really am yeah. and you i can see you thinking or <laughs> you see that that glazed over look is well, what i'm thinking about and also too I've, I've just noticed like a lot of little <laughs> things that people don't have to get they just feel it and that is like you you catch what people are enjoying and what they're not and yeah. you can you can switch like that, and that's ta- that's a nag. That's talent right Thanks, there. Thanks, man. But yeah, I love the writing. Great guitar player. I'm a great musician, and Thanks, all that. I just wanted to take a second because I know you have guests on here, and just wanted to say I appreciate it, man. And, and likewise, I'm a fan of yours too. And and I think that's why, like when we um, when we would. Because you rode the bus with Neil when we were out with Neil. You rode Neil's bus, and you know you weren't on the on the yes, band. Yes, I did. <laughs> probably, probably a good thing for a good reason for that. Because there was enough drinking oh, going we on. To, the... We used to talk smack about you guys, them guys. I'd say, I know Neil. That, I was thinking the same that thing. Damn band bus guys. Blah, blah. No, but the I was just saying. Tonight. You know like, what, Neil? Was... Yes. <laughs> but like when we'd hit the sale, you know, hit the stage for sound check or whatever. It's it seemed like uh, we always musically we're in the same um, like realm together, you yeah. know, and. You, some like like sometimes we sing a song. Well, not sometimes, but Neil always had us sing songs, you know, during the show to introduce us and stuff. And that was that was such a rare thing too because everybody in that band sang, like sang well. So it was like he started off on your it side was, with you, yeah. and I think he used to do Whiskey River most. Of the I time. did Whiskey River because we had that Texas band. And you, you know, know and what's funny it is I I do that version now. Mm-hmm. But I'd never heard the shuffle version of that. No and, way. And when, no, I'd never heard it. And I remember the first time he did it, I'm like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, and then, of course, Lauren's like, you know, do me right the head nod, like, yep. yeah, Whiskey Ricker, man, you know, yeah, yeah. And and I got, you got done. That was the first time I heard it that way. I think we're just at a show, and I don't remember if you used to do a different song or something, but you started doing that, and we used to start doing Whiskey River one day. And I was like, holy shit, that's honky tonk, man. That's badass. I love that. I didn't know we could swear on here. You can say whatever you want. I've been refraining. Oh, no, don't refrain. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, I can see this is not going to work out. Golly gee. (laughs) 
<laughs> Is that swearing saying <clears throat> shit? I don't know. Uh, not for me. I'm Canadian. Canadians swear a lot. Really? Oh, my God. I've never heard you swear that much. Really? No, wait. <laughs> no, no, I take that back. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I swear a lot. We were talking off microphone earlier, yeah. We... <laughs> Can I push play this, now? This is, this is not the time right now, Sean, because okay, Black Lives Matter, okay? Okay. So <laughs> Remember, this is music and memories. And, there, and, there, and there goes our two listeners right there. <laughs> anyway, you're terrible with segues. I'm going to have to cut and paste all this shit later. Are you really? <laughs> no. I'm just Let's do that. No, but I, I keep forgetting what I'm talking about because we're jumping around so much. <laughs> oh, here's another non-segue. Yeah. Great story. So yeah. in, in Canada at the time, they had no casinos. It's back in the war. <laughs> You keep I was talking riding, about you gonna talk about Canada the whole damn time. I was riding this moose and I mean riding her heart. <laughs> I'll give her I'll give her The moose said, Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> Holy shit, we're not even drinking. This is bad. Uh, Maybe we should have a drink. Maybe you should crack your the, Oh no no the, no take, no no. Give, we, what do you call we, it? Give up your coin for <laughs> for an hour? <laughs> what is that? Did you, did you do the, a, oh, did the, you do the oh, AA thing and all that stuff? No, I didn't. Did you ever do that? You just quit cold turkey? Uh, well yeah. So you woke up in your own pool of vomit one day and you said, yeah, I don't think I like this anymore. <laughs> when I couldn't, when I couldn't talk or breathe or sing or see, I thought, you know, I wonder if it's allergies. <laughs> Back then it was COVID. You didn't even know it. <laughs> COVID, yeah. With a splash oh my of coke. gosh. I got it. I'm sitting here coughing. I got it. And getting lightheaded. I'm laughing so but hard. But anyway, so I had never played any kind of casino in my life because in Canada they didn't. <laughs> Where's the story come from? You're going to love it. So we were talking about singing Whiskey River. <laughs> a, guy, a guy by the name of Johnny Yu. Oh, okay. Wait, let's go back to where you're complimenting me. I like that part the best. Is that right? <laughs> oh, like, shit. There's a guy by the name of Johnny Yu who's a, is a cowboy out in Idaho, and he hired me. In fact, Neil got me that job. Ah, what's, what was his name? Johnny Yu. Johnny Rutia was his real name, but he went by Johnny I Yu. remember that. Um, Great guy. Yeah, I just I talked to him there. It was his birthday. Uh, but Neil got me that job. They did a gig together in Albuquerque, New Mexico at a, at a rodeo. Cause you were, uh, you'd already left Neil, you're saying? No, no, no. So this, I was still in Canada, but I had met Neil, but he didn't take us on the road right away. So getting back to my, one of my very first stories, he, the whole rehearsal thing with, with Neil at the Cook County Saloon, he said, you know, I can't afford new oh. guys right now, but I'm going to keep in touch. And I thought, yeah, I will never hear this oh, guy again. Okay. Okay. And again, it's long before cell phones, but Neil would call my mom and dad about every week and a half, about every two weeks. And finally, my dad said, this guy is going to hire you. Just hang in. Like, don't, don't get married. Don't do anything oh, stupid. Oh, really? You know? Yeah, he yeah, would call yeah. You, huh? What did, what did he call it to say? Just like, hey. Just, I'm... hey, man, just checking in, make sure you're still in rest. And I'm like, yeah, man. Oh, really? You know? Or a lot of times I was, I was still on the road in Canada with, with my band. So yeah. I would call home and get, get messages. And my dad would say, man, that guy from Texas called again. I'm yeah. like. That Chinese black fella called me. Yeah, <laughs> whatever he is, I or something. I don't know what he is, but uh, so uh, him and he met Neil McCoy met Johnny Yu in Albuquerque, New Mexico at this rodeo, and Johnny just happened to say, he goes, <clears throat> "Excuse me, Vince." He said, "I am really looking for a guy that can maybe front my band here when I'm gone because Johnny was a big Dodge uh, truck salesman at the time for the Southeast, one of the oh, top reps." Okay, he said. I can book the band more, but I, I can't always be there. And Neil says, man, I just met a kid in Canada that sings and oh, okay. plays guitar. And and so for Neil, it was a way for me to get into the United States with my paperwork and get uh, all that legal yeah. stuff going. But he told John, he said, however, uh, he said, I'm going to hire steal him from you. when I can. He said, but maybe it'll you know help bridge this gap or whatever. So I went with John to you, and I didn't know that Neil was going to hire him until John and you told me that. No kidding. I did not how, know that. How many gigs in was that? Did it I take? was with Johnny for nine months, oddly enough, for, for oh, nine wow. months. Yep. Uh, because he, uh, Neil hired Donnie first because the, uh, his he next single coming out was, uh, uh, and this time I heard him. Yeah, had yeah. The yeah. Conway Twitty song with yeah. the fiddle thing on it. So he, he called me and said, I don't want you to give up on me. He said, but you yeah. know, I can only afford Donnie right now. And because our and new I single is fiddle. fiddle yeah. And I'm like, I get it. And I thought that was it. But like I said, when I went with Johnny Yu, that's when I found out that he was going to hire me because Neil had told Johnny Yu, he said, hey, just so you know, I am going to hire him. Um, you know, but I'll be dang. Yeah. That's pretty odd for, I mean, you don't really, you're hit or another artist going, hey, yeah, this other guy's going to hire you. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, like, 
you know, and Johnny said, when the time's right, he said, I want you to go because he's, 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 he's really up and getting, coming. Yeah, yeah, he's booming. Yeah. But anyway, the story I was about to tell was I had never played a casino before. And the very first gig I ever did with Johnny U was in Jackpot, Nevada. In Canada, I knew that things were starting to shape up where I was going to be coming to the United States and just a different level for me and a lot yeah. more responsibility. So I quit drinking and I quit smoking started working out trying to really like be in shape for the next level uh-huh. and i'm in vegas and i'm and 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 or i'm in jackpot nevada and johnny Yu says i hadn't even struck a note with johnny Yu yet we, we went to jackpot a couple of days early just to hang out and uh-huh. and we were going to play that weekend so this is friday morning johnny comes by and he says let me pay you, you probably don't have any american money so he pays me my whole week's Oh, wow. Because I was like, man, Johnny, this is you, great. You haven't heard me yet. <laughs> so I go over to, I walk across the street to this casino and I start playing. And of course, I can't gamble. I've never gambled before. Uh. And this woman comes along with a tray of Jack Daniels, uh. Budweiser, <laughs> You're poison. and free cigarettes. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, no. Oh, no. I never thought heaven would look like this. Yeah, right. <laughs> And so I, I start with one cigarette and one little thing of Jack Daniels. And then it just leads and leads and leads till I am broke by noon. I'm broke by noon and I'm hammered. I'm supposed to play that night. You're broke already by noon? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, bet it all, right? Uh, I got this. Yeah. So I'm broke and drunk by noon and I'm supposed to play that night with John Yu, who's never heard one string on my guitar. Oh, my word. Well, it gets even better. I start <laughs> looking worse. at the dealer, and I said, do you know I'm from Canada or something like that? He goes, and of course, he's not talking to me. And I said, hey, I'm talking to you. Uh, Can you tell that I'm from Canada? I don't know what I'm doing to take my money. And I grab his wrist, uh, and I pull him towards me. Well, right about then, I've got two hands up under my armpits. I'm out the front door <laughs> rolling past people coming <laughs> in. <laughs> and I said, but I got to play here tonight. The guy says, not tonight, you ain't. Not, oh, no. So I got to go back to the room and call this Johnny Yu who I'd met once where he paid me. Dang. It's the only time I'd met him. Johnny. <laughs> he goes, shot him? Yep. <laughs> yep. And I explained the whole thing. I think he, so. he had to come into town. Uh, he lived up in Idaho at the time, so he, which maybe I think only a 90 minute drive, but he had to come in early to sweet talk the lounge manager into saying hey you know and i said to johnny i said johnny i'll never do it again i'll never <laughs> do it again and i didn't until i got with neil mccoy oh, i was gonna say and then saturday night happened <laughs> but i never did it again to johnny you <laughs> at least you can say that <laughs> it's funny to look at you now because I, I just just such a totally different image man and i don't think I, like Ooh. i said ever since i've known you i've never seen you take a drink no no i've quit i'm 53 and i quit drinking when i was 26 Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. So that, oh, so that was a long time a ago. A long time ago, yeah. And was it really like a, a, you find yourself in a bad situation? I mean, was that, was that really it that made you stop or did Well, there's a, I don't want to mention names on this particular story, but there was a little boy and you probably know the story uh, or you probably know about the little boy. I don't think I do. I there was think. a, I don't want to mention names because no, I still fine. keep in touch with the family, but we, uh, now Neil was on Atlantic records and back when Neil was on Atlantic, there was Tracy Lawrence, John Michael Montgomery, uh, Confederate railroad, you know, it was a hot label for yeah, country music yeah, in the early nineties. Yeah. And there was a family who had a son that was very, very sick. He was nine years old and Tracy Lawrence was on Atlantic records. Uh, and in the summertime, these artists from Atlantic would take this little boy on the road. Oh, really? For a weekend or something, just to get him away from the hospitals and get him out of his hometown. Oh, and wow. It was uh, really brought a lot of joy to the family and the kid. That's crazy. And, and I everyone. mean, like, I can't even think how the liabilities would be on that now. Nobody could do that now. And then when he came on the road with Neil, all of us in the band had to take turns. Not had to. We took turns like, today would be your day with him. Oh, today yeah. Today would be my day. Yeah. And that's when the video games were, were the big thing, like the golf games and all oh, that, you know, Nintendo yeah. or whatever it was mm-hmm. back in the day. And he was sitting on my lap and we're playing this. And I had to get up at seven in the morning. That was the rules. You get up with this kid and have breakfast with him. And I mean, we were his guardian for the yeah, day. Yeah. And I wasn't hung over. I was still drunk from the night before. 
and we were rolling through Louisiana. It was probably like 4,000 degrees, and I'm dying. And this kid just wants to talk and play, and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, do you want a nap at all soon? Yeah, or? yeah. how about some Benadryl? <laughs> so anyway, he uh, was taking treatments where he had lost his hair, and he had on this Neil McCoy ball hat on, and he looks at me. And he says, you don't feel good today, do you? And I says, no, buddy, I sure don't. He, and he just so innocently and nonchalantly said, yeah, he said, I don't feel good every day. That was it. That no kidding. That was truly it. That's the reason. He's the reason I quit drinking. No way. We went to Billy Bob's that weekend, and I remember calling my mom on the payphone. Uh-huh. And she didn't know that I'd been drinking so much because I was out on the road. I'd been out on the road since I was 16, 17 years old, just tearing it up, you know, yeah. alcohol-wise. Yeah. And fighting and drinking and playing guitar. I thought, boy, this is alive. Who who wants to give this up? You yeah. Know? And I told her, I said, you know, I I met this little guy and he's changed my life. And she was like, oh, well, I didn't know that you had a promise. And yeah. I, I did. I, I, I had a problem. That's a powerful story, man. <laughs> Very. Um, I, I, don't, I never did hear that story. And uh, his mother and I still keep in touch. And, you know, on Has Facebook he passed and, on? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. He sure wow. did. Wow. Yep. But uh, so, so literally, like right then, you just it hit you like I gotta stop. And we were going to Billy Bob's, where Neil again is like the king of country mm-hmm. music there, and they they get offended if you're not half drunk with them there, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. in a good way, like yeah. they, they love you so much. Sure. And I remember just staying on the bus because I I didn't feel that strong. I don't, you know, I know there's there's people that really battle alcoholism, and they're probably listening to me going, "Well, you're making light of it." I'm not, I don't think you're making light of it. I'm not trying to make light of it, but I also don't feel like I was an alcoholic either because I could sit at home and not drink a drop. It's just right. when I was out in the road partying and girls were around, yeah, yeah, and, you yeah. know, other musicians. Like, right. I couldn't just have one drink or one beer or I would just go, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, 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 and you're young and you're living in the moment at that time. And you're like you said, you're out on the road. You're I was like, living the dream. Like, this is a honky-tonk yep. thing to do, you know? And I mean, like, you see guys like Paycheck and... And Jones, all and, the guys we grew up idolizing. Yeah, all the idols that you had, and they're all doing the same damn thing. Jennings and her, you know, Waylon Jennings, and all these guys are doing the same thing. So it's like in your mind, you're going, "Well, I'm just following their footpaths yep. and doing what I'm supposed to do." But so I don't think you're making time, light of it, you know. And at the same time, though, I never messed up a gig with Neil. Like I, I never went to a gig hammered. But I, by God, as soon as I hit that, <laughs> had that last note, buddy, she well, was that, straight to the and bar. And there's nothing wrong with that either, right? Because uh, yeah, a lot of artists will say, like you know, Aaron, um, well. We'll start drinking before the show sometimes, you know, which you drink wine sure. or whatever. And he drinks, you know, wine a lot. But, Aaron but it's, yeah, it's never impairing, you know. But yeah. like he says, you know, like, hell, hey, even I want to have a drink before the show and loosen up, you know. But, but hell, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get blitzed or whatever. Let's wait till after the show, you know. And that's yeah. just common sense, with, you know, most of the time with, with most people, they know that. But he's never had to sit there and say, like, hey, don't, don't drink too much before sure. the show because he knows I'm not going to get hammered or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, it, and you're talking about, <clears throat> Like people see me drink downtown or at shows or whatever, and it's kind of like it got to the point where I was drinking so much uh, down on Broadway when I first moved. Well, I can't say that I, that's when it started. It started years ago, back in Tucson. When I was doing. We're all gigs. well aware. No, yeah, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but it was almost like, how many shots convinced you tonight? Oh, was that? Yeah, right. yeah, and like that's the crowd it, was in on it. Yeah, oh yeah, because uh, dude, I can't tell you that I've ever paid for a drink in wow. my life. You know what I mean? As far as at a, at a gig or whatever. Yeah. And so when I go somewhere and they're like, you know, eight bucks, I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't pay for drinks. People buy yeah. me drinks. You know what I mean? Yep. So that just kind of carried on to, and it actually was a, a good way to come to Nashville because the bar owners love that people are buying you drinks. You know, I mean, the buying, buying, sure. buying the band yep. drinks, sure. you know, but it got to the point where, um, and, and, and I've never been the guy to, to drink at home ever. I've, I just, I would do that at a gig. That sure. was my yep. thing at the gig. Same with me. Same with so me. for Christmas or, or birthdays or something like that, these, you know, French would bring in like these gallons of the gallon bottle of, or half gallon of Jack or whatever it is, you know, and now they bring me Tito's and I'm like, I don't, I don't drink at home. Yeah. Now I do because we're doing Facebook lives at home and it's like, well, we don't have a bar to go to. And when you're playing, it's almost like, you know, Hey, I'm going to have a drink, you know, sure. but, yep. but I was the same way. I was drinking hard at the gigs, but. But I'd come home and be like, ugh, like, I just can't sit and not do anything sure. and drink. So I totally get and what I you're saying And I went through that, too, that. though. I really did. Um, you know, and I don't judge anybody. I mean, some of the best players I oh, know I are do. doing it. Tell doing me some it. names. I'll judge them for you. <laughs> <laughs> some of the best players I know, like, they tell me, hey, I got wasted last night. I'm like, really? Oh, you can you, tell. Yeah, yeah, you played great, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, people have told me that on Broadway. They'll, I'll get done with the show and just be like, 
hammered, you know, yeah. and, and it'll be done or whatever. Now, can can I get you a drink? I'm like, dude, I just drank twenty <laughs> shots, you know. Like, yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. And they're like, I'm like, I'm drunk, and and they'll, and they'll be like, what? You you drunk? I'm like, you didn't seem drunk up there. And I'm like, well, I guess I got you fooled. Yeah, you know. But that I'm not saying that. Buy me a drink. I'm not saying that's a good thing, you know, because <laughs> sure. it really isn't. Because there was a lot of times where I'm like, damn, I wish I was more in my wits when I was talking to so and so because yeah. it, I wanted that conversation to be a little more meaningful than than. Me driving home going, what the hell did I tell that guy? Or, you know, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that there's not a regret to go with that, but. But haven't we had a great <laughs> life, though, Vince, playing music? Oh, yeah. I but, mean. Uh, but I feel like you, like you said, I don't I don't consider myself an alcoholic, even though I drink a, sure. a yeah. lot, yeah. you know. And, and, and if somebody said, you know, hey, buddy, you just can't drink anymore. I'd be like, OK, that's fine. How, uh, how big is food is my other vice. How <laughs> big is Wilcox, Arizona? <laughs> oh, it's big enough to. Um, like where I'm going with this is I'm I'm from a little town in Canada. Yeah, I'm I mean, very little, it's very small. Yeah. 365 people. So when I was a kid, everything we're talking about was such a huge dream. I thought, oh my god! I thought it's unreachable. Like I would hear, yeah, I man. would get a George Jones record and think, oh my god! Like how could I ever? How can I ever be this guy? Or yeah. How could I? I'll never meet him or Merle yeah. Haggard or Tim Wynette or just dude. When Wilcox was so so small, I was trying to think of something to compare it to but it was so small that like if a tour bus stopped at the truck stop for for fuel sure yep everybody drove over there to like yep. who, who is that in that fancy you my know, closest bus. city for that would have been buffalo new york and oh really yeah that was i i'd get all dressed up i remember going to see mo bandy one time at a club in niagara yeah. falls new york and we get there and they don't let kids in <laughs> and i'm dressed up i got my cowboy hat on my oh, boots buddy. i mean i had my clothes set out since eight that morning yeah. you know ready to see mo Excited, bandy man. And I was crushed, you know. My dad, of course. Oh, sorry, they're only kids. I guess you know. Wait, wait in the car. Show in the car. We'll be out in a couple of hours. Here's some Jack Daniels. Go wait in the car. And the and the club owner is, is like, we're getting ready to go home, you know. And the club owner was like, ah, you know what? Uh, if can you just wait in the like stay in the kitchen? Can you promise me you'll stay in the kitchen? Yeah, you got it. Hmm. And I remember really? they had yeah they had those swinging doors. Yeah, you know the in and out doors of the kitchen. And I had to stand on a little stool to look through this window, but I had to move every time somebody was coming in oh. because they they don't know that I'm there. Oh, so yeah. I'd have to jump down, move the stool, and come in with a tray of oh, empty dishes, God. you know, <laughs> door closed, I'd be back up. <laughs> what did I miss? You know, holy cow! Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. If I if I get hit by a city bus tomorrow, my life has been marvelous. Oh, dude. You know, it's just been like even just living in Nashville. When you're a Canadian, it's it's a far away place mentally and physically it's Dude, just you know the same way for it's like arizona's like a whole you, i mean you're probably closer from where you're at in canada than i was oh, from but arizona. the obstacles i gotta get yeah, over yeah, yeah. you know like legally well that kind of leads me to the question because i was <laughs> i was gonna ask you yes did, did as a kid like that were you did you always like dream of like man i want to go to america and play country music would, would that even cross your mind because you said you had like a built-in you know, following the stuff with your dad's band and all that stuff. So did you even think, was that ever like a big dream of yours? That to was come never to the not on my mind. Okay. Even like everything, I love Canada and I'm a proud Canadian. So sure, sure, I don't sure. want this to come across the wrong way. But the whole time since I can remember, it's like I'm a big Elvis fan. So I played these uh -huh. Elvis records and I knew that he lived in Memphis, Tennessee. You know, <laughs> yeah. had no idea what it looked like or where it was. But, but as a young kid, everything felt so temporary to me. Like my friends, I didn't worry about doing bad grades. I'm like, it's all right. One day I'm going to be in Nashville. Anyway. Really? And I actually, when I was 16, I ran away from home. I was out in the middle of Alberta, which I'm not from there. I'm from Ontario. But I was doing this gig in Alberta, and I got fed up with just no one caring about what I was doing. And I was 16. And yeah, had, like every 16-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And I had my Telecaster, and I had a stray dog. I don't know even know what? where the dog come from, right? <laughs> So <laughs> I'm learning more shit about you tonight. Than I, have I get up at three in the morning. I'm, I'm rooming with the steel player. Find out later he knew everything that was going on. I thought he was sound asleep. This dog wouldn't quit barking. <laughs> Shut up. We're out of here. <laughs> and it was not winter time, but you know, it's always cold in Canada, right? So I have to start walking down the road. My dog and my telecaster. And I got like sixteen dollars. Damn, you're living a country song. And I'm walking and the dog stops walking and i'm like 
Come on, boy. <laughs> Come on, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I look back and the dog ain't moving. The dog knows better, right? So next thing I know, there's headlights and it's a taxi cab. The steel player went and got my dad up. I was in my dad's band at the time. And he's like, you don't have enough money to get to the border. I'm almost there. <laughs> the cab says, cab driver says, it's uh, 300 miles away to the closest border. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll get in the car. I'll try again tomorrow. It was daylight. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, when it warms up <laughs> so i uh, get in the cab we turn around uh can we get the dog <laughs> oh God. dog jumps in the cab back in bed by three o'clock in the morning you know wow my big 30 minute escape you know i never we, i want to say we we didn't grow up in poverty but it was pretty damn close you know the way i did the way i grew up i mean we were we were poor and so we listened to the radio a lot I couldn't tell you what George Jones looked like you, right. you know, back yep. then. I couldn't tell you who anybody looked like because yep. we didn't have, I didn't have the latest cassette or the sure. legged record. We yep. didn't have that shit. You and know? that stuff wasn't really on TV like it. Like right. It, you know? We had three channels, you know, and we didn't get any country music shows like that. So, and even if I saw them, I wouldn't know who they were by sure. name. You know what I mean? So I must have been probably eight, nine, ten in, in that area, something like that. And my mom was driving me to, we would practice out in this old uh, like FFA building out in the country with the, the Mexican band I was playing with at the time. I was playing guitar with these guys. So we would have a rehearsal, quote unquote, like every week, Wednesday or whatever, you know, <laughs> and play the same damn songs that we played the last week. <laughs> it, wasn't really, good. it was like, just let's get together and play, in other words. So anyway, we're driving by the, the truck stop there in Wilcox and we see this huge bus, you know, and I'm like. I'm like, oh wow! And my mom's like, look, look, look! Maybe there's somebody famous on there, and they'll get to help you. My mom's always, is that she's right? always thinking, maybe if you, if they hear your song, you know, yeah, <laughs> she's that's, always, moms she's are great. Always for that. been that way. Yeah. So we pull in there, and there's this big guy standing out in front of the bus there, and my mom pulls up, and she, I said, uh, I can't remember. She asked who was on the bus or whatever, and I said, whose bus is this? You know, and I'm just a little kid, you know, and the guy said, oh, it's Eddie Raven, and I was just like, oh wow, and I'm like, Who's he would have been hot then too. He, he been, was, yeah. And top was, of the charts but i was like who the hell is eddie raven you know and oh, i was like right? yeah. oh well, I, yeah, like sure. i said yep. i didn't know names yep. or nothing you know i'd probably heard all the songs yep. on the radio but and i just go oh okay and then he's like oh he's in the trucks i beat and you know and my mom's like oh he just wanted to meet him you know my mom didn't know That's <laughs> she's great. like it's just somebody famous you know so then uh we walk into the truck stop and and uh, um i remember we walked up to the you know the the, the hostess you know and, and my mom says uh because everybody knows everybody in Wilcox, so my mom knew the hostess, and she says, uh, hey, we wanted to see, is Eddie Raven in here or whatever? And and she, the lady says, like, yeah, yeah, there's a tape right there. And my mom said, oh, I was going to let Vince meet him, blah, 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 because everybody knew I was, you know, the, the young guitar player in town. Or, says, yeah, oh, yeah, it's right over there. So I walk up to, like I said, I don't know who the hell he was. I walk up to the biggest guy sitting at the table and I said, are you Eddie Raven? And the, all of them, there's like eight of them sit at this booth, and they just all bust out laughing. It was a freaking bus driver. And I, oh, and I is said, that and, right. and they like, and the guy, and he's like, you know, he's sitting there going, <laughs> no, that's any rave. You know, they got a chuckle sure. out of it. And yeah, here, yeah, I, yeah. here I'm going, why are they laughing at me? You know, oh, like, this is, no. I feel like an idiot. So he goes, I, I said, can I have your autograph? You know, and he's like, oh, yeah, kid, you know. And actually, it was really cool because he probably could have said, like, you don't even know who I am. What the right. hell you yeah, want yeah, my autograph yeah, yeah, yeah. for? You know? Yeah. So he signed an 8x10 and gave me a bunch, like a handful of pics and stuff. Wow. And but it's just funny because I was like, I always tell people all the time, growing up, I didn't. I didn't know who was what. Sure, I mean, yeah. I, I didn't know what you don't know what they looked look like. like. No, yep. I didn't. I couldn't tell you what the. I could play their songs. I didn't even know who it was. You know. I remember but thinking that's that, how small Wilcox was. That we would just pull over and see a bus. And be like, hey, let's go meet this guy. But they were, you know, I got to say that Freddie Raven. That was pretty cool of them. And sure. I wish I could see him in one day. To <laughs> I've always thought if I run into yeah. him, I can't wait to tell him that story again. He's a big guy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's a, big, a big, big tall dude. Yeah. I know. Uh, like through Neil, I. So much like you, I grew up listening to all these records and had no idea what they looked like. But Neil rose pretty quickly to to do great shows. And to, like I've met I'm, everyone that I wanted to meet, I really met through Neil, like in the early right. years and early nineties. A lot to be said for that with me too. So we are on the road with Merle Haggard, and it was Merle Haggard, Tim Wynette, John Anderson, and Neil McCoy. I mean, Whew. good lord, son, and. And hats off to Neil, man. He might not have had the hits they did, but he had the show. He's I was going to ask you, was he always just on fire like that on, on the stage presence part of it? Well. Or did he kind of grow into that? No, 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 no. It was from day one. And really? I was told. So I'm, I'm kind of I'm switching gears a little bit. But before 
before we even did one rehearsal with Neil, when I first went with Neil in the early 90s, we did a rehearsal. I liked his voice right away. I mm-hmm. like that. I like that good baritone voice. And everyone told me, because Lynn Massey, who was our band leader, those guys had already been with him for about six or seven months. Everyone told me, wait, wait till you see him live. I mean, not only was the band telling me, because I thought, well, maybe they're just biased, but people in Longview. Oh, are you with Neil? Yeah. Yeah, wait till you see but his But you saw show. him at the saloon thing, right? I did, but here's the problem with the saloon thing, is there was like four people in there. Two of them were me and Donnie. Oh, So really? the band played more than Neil did. He was oh. backstage. Oh, really? And I think he was kind of under the weather, if I remember correctly, too. And of course, I was fine with that because I'm a big Texas yeah, music Yeah, you were fan. Here probably hearing Lauren and Lynn and play all that Lauren Texas. and Lynn and all these guys are from Texas, doing oh, Johnny yeah. Bush and Daryl McCall. But uh, so getting back to this, we were on the road for, I think two months and i got to meet everyone that i ever wanted to meet was through neil being with neil and neil was really good about he knew that i liked the older (laughs) country music like merle and george and that so we're we're on the road with merle and merle was trying to quit smoking cigarettes and i was smoking like a freight train back then (laughs) and i had befriended clint strong who was neil or who was merle's guitar player at the time and and i said i said man when it's when when the timing's right i'd love to meet meet Merle mm-hmm. Clint goes well it's not every day that you know but I'll, I'll come get to when he's in a good mood and all that I'm like yeah whatever. yeah I so, heard he was temperamental a like little that. bit moody yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to tell you just how moody oh no <laughs> <laughs> anyway I have this old yellow telecaster and I'm thinking I mean, I'd love to get Merle to sign it and I asked Clint Strong his guitar player at the time I said yeah. I would be up for it he goes yeah but I'll come get you when the, when the, yeah, when the I'll days let you right. know when he's feeling it and it's pouring rain <laughs> And Clint's a hyper guy. He's like, all right, man. Hey, hey, yeah. it's a good night. It's, it's, hey, you get your guitar now. It's a good night to meet Merle. And I said, all right. So I'm out in the pouring rain. I'm soaked like a like a wet chipmunk out there <laughs> waiting to get on the bus. And there's a big sign on the bus that says no smoking. Well, I open the door. All I see is a cloud of smoke, but it ain't cigarettes, right? Oh, so yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> come with you. <laughs> so I'm sitting across for those that may not know what a tour bus looks like, on either side of the tour bus are these couches, these long couches. And I'm sitting on one side, and Merle's on the other, and I'm, like, waiting for the right time. And he says, what kind of guitar you got there? Well, click, 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 a couple things on the guitar case, and I got out this blonde Telecaster. And I was like, would you mind signing it? And he said, no, not at all. And he's playing my Telecaster. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, man. Wow. I'm never, I'm a big stringy guy, sell this you know. Guitar. And I'm like, I'm never going to clean it. I've still got it, you know. That's awesome. And uh, he signed the pick guard. Everything is going great, Vince. Everything's going great. He's asking me about the guitar. I don't know anything about guitars, right? Yeah. I just wanted to play country music and be cool. I, I don't, like, if, does the a, amp work? I'll take it. I'm not a gearhead either, man. I couldn't tell you. People are like, hey, what's the neck on that? Does, uh, that, does that have a 29 bridge on it? Probably. Yeah, you know? if you think it does. Yeah. Does it look like it to you? <laughs> is that going to make me cool if it does? Yeah, then it's got it. I'm the same way, dude. <laughs> so he is playing the fire to this thing, like loving it. And he's even jokes. He says, you, you think about selling? No, well, not now. Holy cow. Like, just joking with me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, not now. You know, Merle Haggard signed it, right? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I think everything's going swimmingly. At the very last minute, I said, would, it, would you mind if I got a picture? And he's like, no, not at all. Well, he's sitting across from me. <laughs> he's sitting across from me on these couches that are facing each yeah. other on his bus can't see for all the cigarettes or not cigarette smoke it's yeah other kind of smoke yeah and he's trying to quit smoking right cigarettes <laughs> but anyway so cigarettes yeah. tobacco <laughs> i get somebody to take a get rid of take a picture i smack him lightly on the knee i said god damn this is great merle i appreciate it and he is glaring right through me and i'm looking at the camera smiling and i feel him glaring at me just because you touched him like that? And or? at the very last second, he turns and looks at the camera. And I wish I had the picture with me. It's like, if I could kill this dude, I would right now. Really? So he looks at the camera just enough to get a picture and stares right back at me like like ready to kick my ass. And I'm thinking, God damn, you know. Wow. So Clint gets right in my face. Oh, yeah. Nobody touches Merle. Oh, God damn. Don't touch oh, Merle. But, no. Oh, no. Now you tell me. I was just excited, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't touch Merle. Don't touch Merle. But anyway, fast forward about two weeks. Merle's over it. And he's trying to quit smoking. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Yes. What, ha- what happens when you're still sitting there, though? Oh, no. I Clint got me out of there. Oh, he just said, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh, like, okay. pushed yes. me on their arm. and it, uh, like, it, it was storming, oh. raining out, and my guitar wasn't even in the case. It's getting soaked. It's like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, don't touch Merle. Yeah, name, oh, you know? no. I'm like, well, nobody told me, you know, because yeah. it was just an innocent man. Merle, thanks so much yeah, for this, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like on the leg. Like a friendly pat. Even, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway. It's like he co- co-cocked him in the jaw or something. <laughs> you probably should have. You probably should have. <laughs> now that I know. Stand up. No, I mean it. <laughs> I am standing up. You He's like 5'4", right? <laughs> but anyway, so. Uh, oh, my god. About two weeks later. I guess he's over it, or it turns out he forgets, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm outside smoking a cigarette, and I see Merle come out of his bus, and it's pouring rain out of this place, and I think we're in Indianapolis, I think. I don't really remember. How, are we good on time? Oh, talk as long as you want. Just wake, me, wake me up when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the kids off to school, but other than that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So a couple weeks later, you know, I, I had I had seen him backstage and stuff, and I don't say a word to him. And he doesn't know me. He doesn't care anything about me. And a million things have happened to him by then. But I'm thinking, I really pissed this guy off. Oh, yeah, you know? still, yeah. So one night, I'm out behind this venue that we're all playing, and there's this little awning type thing, and it's pouring rain, and I'm out there smoking cigarettes. And I see Merle come off his bus and run towards me. I'm thinking, shit, this oh, is God, it. He's coming to slap me in the, slap me in this the leg. This is it, man. <laughs> and he's like, hey, he said, I'm trying to get off these things you mind if i get a cigarette from you I said, sure so <laughs> just don't touch me <laughs> yeah i'm thinking maybe he doesn't recognize me i don't know <laughs> so he's not really saying much but he's like chokes down the cigarette like amazingly fast I'm yeah like, damn dude you know <laughs> what do you want another one yeah, yeah. i love another one right about then the door opens up you boys can't stand here the door closes we don't even have time to say nothing the door closes again so Merle's choked down like he's on his third circuit. And I'm like trying to keep up. I'm like lightheaded and ready to pass out. And Merle's choking him down because he hasn't smoked in a month. You yeah. know? Right about then, the door opens again. You boys can't stand here. I got poor people coming through here. Door closes. We don't have time to say nothing. Yeah. Finally, the third time, Merle grabs the door and he says, who the hell you got coming through here so important? We got Merle Haggards tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to Merle Haggard. Oh wow! Yeah, that's funny. So I one <laughs> night a few weeks later, I brought up the whole touching him on the bus. He's looking at me like I'm from Mars. Like he, he didn't didn't remember. He's probably so stoned out of his mind. Didn't man. remember. He's like, uh, okay, and just just <laughs> didn't say a word. <laughs> but Awkward. so I shut up right away. I thought, okay, dude. Okay, yeah. let alone. And by the way, yeah. Merle, it was the other guy in the band. It wasn't me anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're staying there, and it's just him and I. It was after a show, and they this guy was, you know, backstage. For all you folks who may not know, there's always tents set up with food and catering, things like that. And at the end of the show, well, not always, but <laughs> it's not always, and it's usually not any good. <laughs> yeah. She's a Canadian food or some shit. <laughs> Canadian cheese. Oh, you got high cholesterol? That's surprising. <laughs> You've been on the road how long? Tim Hortons for lunch again. <laughs> <laughs> See how nervous I got yeah. there when you said Tim Hortons? <laughs> you got all shaky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the uh, 12 donut program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I go to get what food was left. I didn't know it was Merle standing there. And I, it wasn't until I got up there and I, I bring this up again and he, and he get this look on his face. So I just shut up right away. Yeah. And he starts, he says, have you ever heard this song? And he mentions this song title. I'm like, no, I don't think I have. And he starts singing. Oh. And I'm standing there going, like, this guy is a legend. And he's known around the world. And for a brief moment, it was like he just wanted to sing this old Jim Reeves song. He's like, I'm thinking about recording some Jim Reeves. What about this? You ever heard this? Put your sweet lips. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. Yeah, bouncing ideas off you and singing to you. Well, I'm thinking and just sounding just great, oh, you know. Man. And but damn, right next to me is this guy putting up the food in the trays, clank, 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 clank. I'm, dude, <laughs> you, do you not see what's happening here? <laughs> I'll pay you like a hundred bucks right now for any one of those effing trays. Just <laughs> shut up. That guy's going. I gotta get the setup for Roy Haggard. <laughs> Don't you know we got Roy Haggard coming to lunch here? <laughs> but he sang about three. Uh, so different songs, you know, and really, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Dang, man, I didn't know you had that much one on one time with him. That's uh, crazy. Yes, and you still got that guitar, too. I do. In fact, I, I never sell that thing. No, I don't play it out much. Yeah, and you know what? It's a cheap telecaster because it's one I bought when I first started playing the electric guitar at 18, so it was all I could afford at the time. Yeah, yeah, 
but uh, that's on a, he signed the pick guard. It was 1993, I think, or 90, oh, I'm sorry, hang on a second, early 90s, anyway. Yeah. And I have got so much lacquer, oh, lacquer. on that pick guard, you yeah. know, to just not, you know, have it go away. That kind of sucks that he didn't sign the, the actually wood, though, part, you know. It kind of does, yeah. Yeah, because you yeah. can take that pick guard and put on anything, I guess. Yeah. If you wanted to. Yeah. But, but mm-hmm. just the fact that he played it and liked it, you know. It's, well, there's that guitar now. <laughs> well, you can take the, I'm pretty sure you can put the neck back on it. Yeah, yeah, you can put uh, it on. Sorry, can Merle. <laughs> you can glue the neck back on it. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of funny stories with um, people not recognizing the artists. Actually, actually, one of them was was Neil. Uh, I remember we were, we were checking in at the at DFW somewhere or something like that. We we're checking in for a fly date, and he was like handing her the credit card, and she's like, "Y'all a band?" And I'm like, "No, we're just we're construction workers carrying guitars, you know." <laughs> and he's like, "It's a case uh, for my shovel." Yeah, he's like, "Yes, ma'am," you know, whatever. And she's like, "Oh yeah, who's what's the name of the band?" And, of course, his ID says McGoy, you know. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. G A U, whatever, you know, Hubert McGoy, whatever. And so, so I, then I said, uh, Neil McCoy, and she's like, oh, and she's like, yeah, I, I've heard that song about Bond. I said, yeah, wink, shake, you know, blah, blah. And she says, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it, oh is, is he meeting y'all there or whatever? And Neil's standing at the counter, leaning on the wow. counter. I think he was wearing his, you know, pajama pants and, sure. and uh, one of those Crocs or whatever, you know. And you know what? I say this not, uh, I, this is going to sound. I don't know how to make it not sound terrible because it's going to sound like I'm bragging, and I'm not. I've been fortunate enough to have, like you, several artist gigs. Mm-hmm. Oh, brag all you want. I think it's, I'm going to buy. It's God. bragging right, son. Music and memories and bragging. It ain't, like, it ain't like it ain't like we didn't earn it, dude. Well, we did earn it, but I don't like. I'm very appreciative of this too because being from a small town in Canada, there's a million better guitar players. Whatever, I got the gig, and sober I, ones too. Yes, Damn drunkard. So I probably had some gigs that, oh, I used to work with so-and-so. Did I really? <laughs> wow. How was I? <laughs> some, some kid come up to you and said, remember when you slapped me on the knee? I did not. <laughs> yeah, I was the keyboard player. I might have been. I, I don't play piano at all. But uh, what I was going to say was is that Neil, he seemed to get it pretty quickly. Like, he was very patient at the start. He would let you know when he didn't approve of something. Don't get me wrong. But you didn't wake up. Or go to bed that night worrying about your gig, and I and I know you have too. You've had gigs like that, like you've said, maybe spoke your mind, and you get the look or you get that vibe. I was like, damn, am I gonna have a gig in the morning? Yeah. And I've been fired for uh, things that were just maybe asked of me, and I gave the wrong answer. I don't know. I mean, I've been fired because you know sometimes I just didn't like my plan, but more yeah. times than not, it was. I don't know. I never kissed anyone's butt. You I know, have never either. it's like if if that's I've got ten guitar players that would fill this spot for you tomorrow if that's what you want. Right. But right. What you're gonna get is a response by guys. Gear's gonna sound great. I'm gonna know the parts. I'll never embarrass you on stage. But I'm not going to be like a yes sir, yes ma'am. Yeah. You know. It's funny. People think that that way of me. Certain people think that way of me with Aaron because me and Aaron are buddies. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, Aaron will be like, hey, Vince, let's go, whatever, grab something to eat, or let's go to the gym, whatever, you know. And it's just because we're buddies, but yep. I've heard you know, I've heard people be like, oh, yeah, you know, go ahead and kiss the ass, whatever. I'm like, dude, I, I'm totally not that guy. Well, Trust I, me, I'm not that guy. I flat out <laughs> asked Neil when I first started in the early 90s, uh, it, once I got real comfortable with him, because he would have us to his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would... Uh, he knew that I wasn't married. Like some of the, the other guys were married and they had families and they had their houses. Somewhere to go places. to and yeah. all that. So yeah. And I did not. And he, I never went without anything when I needed a car loan. He was the, he was like, yeah. he's like, I'll get it for you. Just, you just pay me. Really? Like you, we just met. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the grant at the car was, I think a $1,200 old Lincoln, but yeah. I'm just saying like, he didn't, he didn't have, all he had to do was give me a gig. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he set me up in an apartment in Longview. Oh, sorry, the other guys may not have known that. <laughs> no, but he, uh, I af- often asked him once I got a little more comfortable with him, I was like, man, you just, you do a lot of things that you don't have to do. And he goes, yeah, but he says, you don't really have anybody down here either. You yeah. know, like he would just show up, him and Melinda, his wife would just show up with groceries sometimes. Yeah. Like, wow. He like, does, man. And, you know, within like the last maybe year or two, He's just, he's been doing that with, like with me. He'll get on us, on us, you know, he does his just talking at night and his pledge in the morning. And anytime he sees me on there, like I'll pop on there, you know, and watch. I'm like, hey, Vinny. He's like, y'all make sure you go check out Vince's, mm-hmm. you know, music and website. And he's just all these accolades. And I'm like, 
And I would tell him, like, damn, man, that's really cool of you to do that because, you know. Well, look at the you, video you collage really have you to did. Do that, you know? Remember the video collage you did where it was. Uh, oh, yeah, the acapella thing that we did yes. together. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, got like 60,000 views or something. That was awesome for him to I just. I mean, it's so supportive, man. I mean, yep, and a lot of his fans come come over and watch me do my lives now and stuff like that. And well, it's, and it's so cool. He man. has brought a lot of awareness to my little old page, too. I mean, it really. Because I get it, they're not there for me, but if. if, if if I'm doing something live and then Neil McCoy is on there and he's always gracious enough to yeah. pop on and say something, yep. it's like all of a sudden people that follow him, right? That's how yep. it works. It's yep. like, and some of them I've kept, some of them they don't care nothing about me, but yeah, some yeah. of them I have kept. Sure. And the great thing about Neil, and I, and you and I both have had a lot of artist gigs, but Neil has been by far my most favorite. He's mm-hmm. treated me the best. He's treated me with the most respect. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had great so gigs. fun. That gig was so fun. I was fun, with Tandy man. Tucker. I was with Johnny Lee. And I'm not trying to name drop. I'm just saying I've had a lot of really great gigs. But I felt uh, like, um, how do I put this? I felt that I was the only guy that could have filled that spot for Neil. That's how he made you feel. Oh, yeah. yeah. With other acts, it's like, we need another guitar part tomorrow. Yes, you yeah. can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. Or, you know, you say, hey, I'm thinking about leaving. Okay, well, I'm going to stand in your way. Yeah. You know? Instead of going, why? Well, let's work it yep. out. You know. <laughs> yeah, but Neil, you know, he he's a he's a he's about the best there is at it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I just remember one time, um, we were in like, let's see, I took the gig. It was like a July Fourth show they did in Tucson, like an Independence Day festival, and the guy they had at the time. Um, it just wasn't he just wasn't working out so that's why neil hired me and and they had he had gone through three or four different keyboard players after the guy that he had steve siegler who was there for like 25 years or something he he wasn't there no more anyway they went through a few people and then finally lou rodriguez um the the acoustic player said hey well you know vince is vince is kind of not doing anything in tucson right now because you were basically playing not basically but you were i was primarily playing guitar yeah i was doing five nights a week well on my gig, I was uh, I always had a keyboard set up in front of me and I the guitar, see, I and I, I that. would double up on gotcha, it. On gotcha. that, you know, I tried that downtown when I first moved here, and it was just so much work, so much yeah. to load in. I was like, nope, it's gonna be one or the other, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But anyway, um, so that was July. So we were out in, I want to say somewhere in California, um, playing this little bar there, and this had to had to have been like probably. <sighs> September maybe maybe even August I was still kind of getting the show down and stuff I was still pretty new so at soundcheck Neil's like all right let's go over to Christmas stuff and I'm like what <laughs> like nobody had you know not to throw Lynn under the bus or anything but sure. nobody had given but me less. <laughs> yeah, but nobody <laughs> give me any kind of heads up or anything like uh, hey you need to start working on the Christmas so Neil was pissed that I because I said I said I don't I don't well Less somebody's got charts, so Lou gives me these charts, and I'm like, dude, I can play like Pig Robin stuff on the piano, but I am not, I can't play the uh, Frank Sinatra, you know, all that yeah. the the songbook yep. stuff. I, it, it, it's over my head because sure. I didn't grow up playing that stuff. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I'm expected to know a whole new genre of stuff. You know, I'm like, holy shit, well, a lot of intervals, a lot of chords. Oh my god, like yeah. the Christmas song? I've yeah. never played that. Or or the Carpenters was that one song he used to do, Merry Christmas, darling. I'm like, holy shit, this has got more movements than I've ever... Did Roy Clark ever do this? Yeah, Uh, exactly. So I remember we couldn't run it at Soundcheck, and I remember he was pissed, and I'm like, wait a minute, it's summertime. Why are we going over Christmas songs right now? I just remember that. Yeah. So we got done with Soundcheck, and I walked up to his bus at... Uh, we all had radios back then, remember? We all yes, used, they each, were we each big had a, as my right leg. Yeah. yeah, we each had a handheld radio because we could all <laughs> communicate. And I said, uh, hey, Neil, uh, come on. And he said, I yeah. got a great story about the radio when, you, when okay. you're done this. <laughs> so I said... I said, hey, Neil, can I come up and talk to you? And he's like, yeah, come on. And I was like, oh, God, here we go. And I and I felt more bad, like, I felt like I'd let him down. Sure. You know, because here's the funny thing. I used to open up for Neil in Tucson. I opened up for him numerous times before I got the gigs. And I and I saw the live show. I idolized him sure. as an entertainer because he I always wanted to be an entertainer. Yep. And, I, and I learned so much from him. And I, I was telling him that all the time. I said... It, so it was a weird for me to come to that gig because I had on, I had him on a pedestal. So that day I felt like, oh my god, I let my hero down, you know? Like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. god, I, I just I felt I, yeah, I couldn't feel any lower. So I go on the bus. I said, I said, Neil, I'm sorry. I just uh, I you know I I didn't know I was supposed to be learning these Christmas songs and blah blah blah. And he's like, can't you just can't you bring like a keyboard to put them on the in the in the back lounge and you know start learning to go over them, you know? Like like he was just putting the nail even further in my coffin. And I was going. 
yeah, I guess I could, you know, I, I guess I'll have to buy one or something with speakers on it, you know, whatever. And I was like, look, man, if, if, if we go home, I'll learn them when we go home. I just, we hadn't been home because when I, when I t- took the gig, I was gone for a month. Wow. The first time, the first run out, I was See gone you tomorrow, hon. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was, it was, it was rough. So I was already, you know, missing the family in the sure. press. Like he was yeah. saying, you're not going to miss family. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to miss him. I hadn't been away from him like that before. So anyway, I just remember, you know, he could have handled that totally different. He said, well, man, if, you know, if you're going to go home and learn it, you know, then, then that's fine or whatever. And I said, well, I don't even have the material. I mean, how am I supposed to learn if I don't even know, you yeah. know? And so I went home and I learned it the best I could. Like sure. I still sucked at it, you know, but it, he was always like, uh, well, that one chord ain't right or whatever, you sure. know, but, yeah. but, but it, it made me to where I can play that shit now Yeah, if yeah. I have to learn it. And I would have never, ever even thought of attempting to learn that stuff if it wasn't for that. So like, like you're saying, he, he did, he did it, it put you in positions to make you, make you better. Oh yeah. You know, and, and like, especially if he saw potential in you, yeah. that maybe you didn't see, I don't mean you, but I mean, you know, no, I, he did in, in me that I didn't know was there. For sure. I'll tell you a story about a ra- the radios you're talking mm-hmm. about. They were great big. They were uh, <laughs> like CB radios. CB <laughs> radios. They were huge. They weighed a ton. Like if you wore shorts in the summertime yeah, with no yeah. belt, you'd be dead. Your yeah. right, your right side would be down <laughs> to your knee, right? Oh, yeah. Those things would like So we, w- we uh, again, this is my first time with him because as you were saying earlier, I was with him two different times. And <laughs> so. <laughs> that sounds like an old college story. <laughs> Well, I was with first time hurt. No. <laughs> first time I couldn't walk for a week, and that was just the radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So we were uh, going on the road with Alabama. Hi, is that Holly? <laughs> so we were girls following me everywhere, Vince. I mean, it's just, you know, oh, yeah. they just, they, I mean, they're coming in your front door. Yeah. You just know? Just walking boom. in where the hell they want to. <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, opening for Alabama and I'm telling you, that was a whole different league for, for all crap. of us. Here yeah. we are fresh out of a motorhome out of West Texas opening for Alabama where back in the early nineties, I think uh, Jeff Cook, the guitar player was telling me they were doing like 24 to $27,000 a day in merchandise. That's serious money. <sighs> Early nineties. Anyway, I'm sitting on the stage. Damn. Early morning. They were huge, man. And their stage manager's name was Ed Smith. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. Ah, well, I say that now. Ed, his name was Ed anyway. And we had these big radios, like you're talking about, Samsonite or something, big big old radios. Yeah. Weighed a ton. They're like a brick with an antenna on yeah. it. And I hear, oh, how's that stage left looking? <laughs> Come over my radio. <laughs> And I'm talking to somebody. I don't even know who it was now, but I was talking to somebody. Uh, stage left. How's that looking? How's the lights looking? It was a lighting guy trying to set the light banks out there. And I just, as a joke, said, yeah, bring it up a little bit. <laughs> and sure enough, <laughs> it starts going up. I'm like, really? Oh, oh wow. And the guy's going, um, who is this? Uh-uh. And I don't answer him, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> finally, he's Basically, like, your frequency was on his frequency. Yes. Right? <laughs> and he's like, um, how's that looking? <laughs> you know, because I, I don't stop him, right? Yeah. <laughs> ah, good. So then it stops. Like, <laughs> uh, bank B. Yeah, bring it down a little bit. Bring it down. So it starts coming down. <laughs> um, are you sure? Yep, looking good, buddy. Bring it down. <laughs> Who is this? Next thing I know, I get a tap on the shoulders. Ed Smith or Steve Matter. Yeah, radio, please. Oh, <laughs> no. I had those lights so cattywampus, you know, like people in the third row were going to get scalp burned, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, are you sure? Yep, bring are it down. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> we want those about a foot off stage <laughs> perfect <laughs> you are funny. hired my friend oh my gosh man we you know we could record for days about stuff you i know, think we just, have just with neil you know i've had to pee for an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> well, that's too bad you have to use that jug down there behind your leg there <laughs> no i wanted to talk about uh, talk about you some because um <clears throat> other than you're drinking and smoking uh, <laughs> <laughs> and womanizing and what have you womanizing <laughs> and sinning Gambling. I've been married fighting. twice. I'm glad they're wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got money. <laughs> That's like Sammy Kershaw says, uh, what do you say? I don't, I don't want to get divorced. I like my house or something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, I was going to say, um, <clears throat> you probably had, uh, I think you were telling me the other day, you kind of had a shot at, at a record deal at one point because when you left, Neil, that was kind of what you wanted to do, right? You wanted to that do is why I left, Neil. Um, yes, yeah, so... Uh, there was there was interest from 
three labels that were serious and it you know what can i say it just didn't happen yeah. but it was uh that's that was my whole goal and i know it was yours too that sure. that's you know why we got into it um and being with neil and some artist gigs have really kind of brings you to the front of that line as well you mm-hmm. know like it, mm-hmm. it gives you a bit of street cred but yeah i from a when i was 14 i had my first shot uh, at a record deal comstock records out of kansas i'll never forget that uh. and uh and had several uh, MTM records out of Los Angeles. That was another one. And these were all when I was a teenager. And then there was like a dry oh, spell when really? I wasn't a cute kid anymore, you know. Yeah. But uh, one thing about that that I will say is when you're young and cute, you don't work for nothing, right? You just think, oh, I got this, you know. Yeah, and yeah. then when I started, you know, I always had a deeper voice. But when I started like having to shave and everything, I, mean, I got to get serious about this music because I was losing interest. Um, but then, yeah. So then when I started getting into my young twenties, I was, I was getting some interest again. And, um, you know, what can I say? It just didn't happen. I got no regrets. I don't think my dad or I did anything wrong. I don't know that we would have done anything different. We just like yourself, you just know, you only know what to do, what you know to do. Right. And it just didn't turn out like, uh, there was a label that, that, uh, Decca records. Right. And I thought, oh my God, man, that's where all my heroes were on. Yeah. Yeah. And I got the call one day, and it's like, you know, this is after about four months of back and forth meetings and and feeling great about myself, and already wasn't talking to people, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I already had my nose in the air. I'm sorry, you are. Oh, you're my mother. Yes, okay. I thought I recognized you. <laughs> <My mother. laughs> What's your last name? Well, I mean, the reason I bring that up is because when a lot of people um, go see an artist show or you know a concert, <clears throat> they see all the guys in the band, blah 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 blah, and most of them just think, oh, that guy just plays guitar. Sure. Or, oh, that guy just plays bass. But a lot of times, like, for instance, you and I, we're both artists in our own right, singers, you know, and front guys in our own yeah. right that do sidemen work like that. Sure. And a lot of people may not know that unless they come out and they go, oh, hey, like, didn't I see you? Like, they see you in public, like, didn't I see you playing with uh, so-and-so? Yeah. Like, I yeah. didn't know you could sing. Yeah, I didn't know you were doing, I didn't know, that, is this your band or who, yeah. you know? Yeah, this is my band or whatever, you know, this is what I, I was doing this before. I ever got an artist, de- you know, or deal or whatever, or played with an artist and stuff. So <clears throat> the reason I bring that up is <clears throat> I know that um, you still record and make music and stuff, and, and I know you still write, but um, I know Father's Day just passed, and I know that, that you just did a you did a project with, actually, um, I, I call him my producer because, you know, he does that kind of stuff, sure, Dave Smith, yep. but, but he owns his own studio. And, and, and um, he is great. Boy, what a talent. <sighs> he's all right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let him get his own uh, music and memories. Yeah, so here's yeah. about me. Let's get back to me. Yeah. Anyway, more about me. No, no, but um, I, you just you just released a song on on Father's Day, and it was so fitting because it's it's, it's pretty much a song about your dad. And well, it is. It's called "The Father's Love," and I did write it about a spiritual meaning. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like the old rose-colored glasses thing. It's like people just took it as, oh, that reminds me of my dad. So right. I didn't, why change their mind? If, right, right, right. If right. that song is touching that person in a certain way, let them have it. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that it's even reaching you. But yeah, that song, it kind of, it's kind of weird, Vince. I know we were talking about this a second ago, but I'm, I'm not a tech guy. I'm not a Facebook guy or whatever. And yeah. it's made me because I'm getting all of these requests from different people and things like that about about that you know yeah well the reason i bring that up is um let's play that song for him sean i'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's throw yes. that that new single that's called father's love it's by sean carson rolling up. Understand 
Cause they're never really all alone Just reach out your hand I'll ease the pain That's what I'm here for And when it gets to be too much Just rest your head on my shoulder It'll soon be all over Just always know how I'm always watching over you you could trade places with me, I'd let you in a heartbeat and give you wings to lift you up as a father's love. Oh, life has a way at coming at you fast. What we really love don't ever seem to last In just one breath, and just like that they're gone And with rain on the window, two hands on the wheel One too many turns, the sound of bending steel Now my baby cries she fights to hold on Oh, and when it gets to be too much Just rest your head on my shoulder It'll soon be all over Just always know how my boots watching over you If you could trade places with me I'd let you in a heartbeat And give you wings to lift you up That's a fly Just rest your head on my shoulder It'll soon be all over Just always know I'm always watching over you If you could trade places with me I'd let you in a heartbeat And give you wings to lift you up That's a fire That's a powerful song. That's a, that is a cool song. And it, Thank it, you, dude, man. It sounds great. Thank you, man. And you know, the, the cool thing about a song, as you know, all the great songs move people, and it doesn't have to necessarily move people in the same way. Like, pe people sure. get their own interpretation. So sure. as we were talking about that song, A Father's Love, I wrote it with a certain meaning, and some people are feeling that meaning and then other people right. are saying well that reminds me of my uncle or that reminds me of my neighbor he was yeah. always like the, the neighborhood father and you're a songwriter you know what goes in sometimes well sometimes try to be sometimes songs come to you like that sometimes yeah. they take forever mm -hmm. for some reason and i don't know why and i guess maybe there was a higher being involved in it than me because i wrote that like just came out of you flowing just, out of you i went and got a guitar one day out of my my music room and i had this down 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 like just thinking it was going to be a little ditty you uh -huh. know and i was trying to think of something easy and light you know yeah and it just started like just it just came out it of just it. isn't yeah. that weird isn't that crazy and you know the guys in the studio did a great job they just yeah man you know they just they dave does it. some good stuff over there that's why so i keep yeah. using him <laughs> that's why yeah that's why i tell everybody yeah my producer dave smith you yep. know and but yep. he's just he's good at what he does he's killer he's got a great ear and i think you were telling me this about this earlier that when you gave him the demo you just said you know just just do what you think is appropriate yeah, yeah because i've always uh being naive i've always felt like i knew exactly what was best yeah. for my song yeah, i wrote yeah. it how can anyone know <laughs> that's a great way to put it being naive because i thought the same way yep. Yep. no i want it to sound like this yep. it's got to have this well, lick and it's got to have dumb. that <laughs> Yeah, and then it's like when you sing it, you know, seven minutes later, you're going, no one getting this song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, for this particular one, I 
I don't know what I guess maybe just maturing. I'm sure that's all it is. A lot of it, yeah. I'm sure. um, but I just brought the song to Dave, and I'm like, "What do you know?" He, he started asking me questions. I'm like, "Dave, what do you think? Mm-hmm. What are you hearing on this?" And once he started rolling out like an intro, and I'm like, "That's it." Yeah. I made, excuse me, I made one suggestion, and uh, before he even hit a note, and that was it. And right. the rest yeah. is all, it's all Dave. The cool thing about Dave is, um, you can. Uh, you can say like, man, I really want this right here in a song. You know, if you can figure out a way to put this or this little or whatever, you know, and be like, yeah. yeah, okay. And then he'll either he'll either do it or be like, man, you know, I tried that and you know, you can listen to it, but I just don't think it's gonna work. Yeah. And then and they go, oh yeah, that doesn't work. You know, whatever. I'm going so, back for more with him. Oh I mean, man, you have to. It's great. You have to. He's just so good, and and he's he's fast, you know, and it just as as a musician and, and a. And a writer, that's what you want. You want to be like, okay, I've got this thing and I'm really on fire about it because you're so passionate about it because it's something that you created and you're like, when can I get it back? And, you know, if you go to a, you know, try to do it in a, in a full blown session in a bigger, in a studio, sure. it's like, okay, well, we're going to have to piece all the musicians together and we're going to have to, you know, yep. <laughs> so two months later, you're like, well, I had the fire for that song then. Yeah. Don't even you care. About it. I've it, written 13 songs. You know. Yeah. It, so it's so cool that he'll be like, you know, in three days, like, okay, well, here, here's this, listen down to this and let me know what you think, you know? I need to tell another mm-hmm. funny story that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. No, no, no. We're good. Anyway. Uh, no. <laughs> And thank you. What do you mean another? You haven't told a funny one yet. Well, this might be it, though. Keep... <laughs> this could be the one. <laughs> well, well, hold on, hold on. Um, do you have Do you have the song uh, like on iTunes? And is, it, is it available for streaming and all that, or can people purchase it? Can they go somewhere and listen to it? Give them so, all that info. Well, here's info. here's the crazy thing, Vince. So, as before, we started going live here on this program here tonight, this podcast here tonight. I was telling you that some of the stuff I'm having to catch up to being that, you know, I did the whole artist thing when I was younger yeah. and the shot at the record, do the whole thing in the last couple, three years, I just been playing for fun on Facebook, da, 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 put out a father's love. And now I'm having to catch up with what people want and expect. And no, I'm not saying that in a bragging way. It's just that they're making me learn uh, like how to do all this shit. Yeah. Nowadays. Like you were saying yeah. about it's a, well, it's and a, all this stuff. It's a, totally, like, it's a whole new world. dude. So I'm like, that's what, cause we just did it. We just did a, a not even a month ago. Right. Mm-hmm. And, or I guess a little over a month ago. Right. And so now we're getting it to where it's uh, going to be available everywhere, but I'm going to do like a CD a release with, and all that. Yeah. Stuff. With that. Yeah. On it. So, but yeah, it's, I'm excited. I well, mean, this is crazy. You know, not to tell your business, but you should put that out as a single. And then still add it on on a CD. You can, still, you can yeah. still do that. That's what I did with my yeah. with yeah. my living this house. But but it, where can people uh, should they look you up on Facebook? I mean, like you got I know you got a music page. What's the, what's the address for that? The, it's Deshaun Carson Country Music. Okay. And I had to add country music because there's a a black rapper, <laughs> right? With Sean that's, Carson. That's not you. And uh, there was a guy up in Toronto, Canada that that knew my dad and said. You know, well, someone told him, well, the son lives in Nashville. You ought to get him up here for a show. Yeah. So I'd never met him. He never met me. So he's like, oh, well, wow. I'll look him up. Sean Carson. <laughs> right? All this stuff. He's yeah. like, oh. Uh. So he calls my dad. My dad's name, was, my dad's passed away, but his name was Grant. He goes, yeah. hey, Grant. Uh, <laughs> see, I'm looking at uh, looking at your son, I think it is. Yeah. My dad's going, yeah. Yeah, what about him? Uh, <laughs> Detroit. Well, um, how how do I put? Is he African American? My dad goes, "What?" <laughs> my dad goes, "What do you think?" He ain't even American. <laughs> he's, not even, he's not even African Canadian. <laughs> Never been down <laughs> either. None of the above. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> so when I met the guy, I said, "Dude, I mean, what were you thinking?" My dad's, you know, yeah. you know my parents. I mean, what? He goes, "Well, I just, I don't know. I, I pulled up Sean Carson, you know." <laughs> Adoption oh, available. Little fellow's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> little fella, I got a book for the next week. <laughs> no, so Sean Carson Country Music on Facebook. Yes. You got a website or anything like that? You, I do not have you, a website. You get one built to maybe yes, in the future? I am working on that now. I'm actually just signed up with. Doesn't it feel like starting all over again? When you, cause, cause I, I pretty much did the same thing. I have, a, I've had three different websites yep. and because I didn't purchase the, the, or keep the domain name, sure. I have to use Vince yep. now because Vince com was like a thousand dollars to buy it back or some sure. shit. It's stupid. So not to sound vague, but <clears throat> I've actually just signed up with 
management slash agent, the whole thing. So Mm -hmm. they are working on things that part of it they don't want me to talk about, and part of it I don't even know anything about. I just leave it up to them. But uh, A Father's Love is kind of part of that process. Okay. They're, uh, they want to release it just as a single. I can't wait for them to do that. So yeah. that's going to be the very first thing we do because it's still fresh. And I want to make sure that right. it gets out there fresh. But yeah. there's some other things that I'm working on that I'd love to talk about, but kind of told not to. Yeah, so. No, that's fine. I'm you just know, trying to get people to, to, to be able to get the song. When you get to my level, it's yeah. Vince, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, so, but go to Sean Carson Country Music and... Because the video's on there. You did a video The video it. is on there. Yeah. The song is on there. That's all totally good to go. We yeah. are going to release it as part of a... Uh, the coolest thing about that song is, uh, you know, you get that Facebook Messenger, right? So you get people chiming on there from all over. My biggest audience right now is in Africa, believe it or not, mm-hmm. and the Philippines. Why? I don't know. Huh. I've, uh, there's been two different nights where I've stayed up like two in the morning doing a live thing for them. And it's been, been wonderful. Yeah. But the, uh, the coolest thing I, the coolest call I got was, uh, through messenger was, do you own the rights to the song? Did you, did you write it solely? Do you own the rights? And I'm like, well, it was this, you know? Yeah. Because what they did was there was a pastor in West Texas that played this song, a father's love at his church. Oh yeah. 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 And what it was, was he had taken in some homeless people, some people that had just fallen down hard on their luck. They were kind of lost and played that song. And I know privately you and I have talked about this, but Mm -hmm. of all the cool things we've done in our life and thanks to other people that that helped us out musically, whatever, that I think is my coolest moment right there for my music was knowing that something I did all by myself. Yeah was thought enough of to be played at a church in West Texas for all these people that needed help and to hope. To hear it. Yeah, yeah, they needed to hear it. Yeah. So thanks for playing that. It's great. Thanks oh, man, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if we can promote anything we can on here, it's definitely music. That's I've got sure. a pickup truck for sale. <laughs> I said about music, I said. No, I see. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I want everybody to go to, to uh, Sean's um, Facebook page, Sean Carson Country Music, and uh, check that video out because... Uh, apparently he's got some things in the works there and he's going to be building up some other cool stuff, but that's a great, it's a great sounding song and it's a well-written song. Thank you, Vince. And, um, man, it's been a pleasure having you sit. Dude, we never get to visit. You I know? know we, we never don't. get to, I know. we live uh, 45 minutes away from each other and, yep. and it's crazy. We saw more when we were gone on the road together, yeah. obviously, than, yeah. Yeah. than we do, than we're sitting. So I'm so glad you came and sat down with me, man. It's Thanks uh, for having me, Vince. It's been a fun three hours, uh, sitting here talking. <laughs> <laughs> sitting here talking oh watch my hair girl oh no wait a second no i think people are going to enjoy this podcast um it's it, honestly it's it's been the longest one i've done but that's that not, it's not right? it's not a problem i'm just saying well, you think you got no viewers now <laughs> no i think uh, people will enjoy this because you know we're both funny and handsome and um well endowed man so i think that that'll come across well, through this uh you're half right <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot we just down to one track <laughs> <laughs> so what's going to be great is they can play this this this, this particular podcast while they're playing Monopoly, right? Oh, and you do while anything. I tell people you don't even have to listen to it; just push play Some and let it stream. <laughs> just just push stream. And, and there's roses the, on the table here. I like that. But I, it's better than two. There's also your, these these these, these, these uh, daisies that are sunflowers. Sunflowers are way past their prime. There, maybe Did you get those uh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you don't like them? <laughs> Love them, <laughs> folks. Thanks for thanks for joining us and and bearing through this longest episode of music and memories that has ever been and there'll never be another one this long ever this ought to shut if you down. want to hear a short one i tell you what go listen to the part one of jim and hodge's podcast that's uh that's out there it's a it's a good it's a good short one there anyway but uh thanks again sean carson man i hope we can do a part two one of these days come up because we didn't even get to half the stories the canadian stories they the even tell, you didn't even tell any in canadian french do you so, speak french canadian no i do not <laughs> you know what's funny you don't even sound Canadian to me. I've been down here longer than I was in Canada. That's why. Did you did you have an accent back then? Like, uh, oh yeah, I got. Uh, I oh still, yeah. He said, oh, oh yeah. You betcha. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I just brought the best out of you. Did I just answer that for you? Or? <laughs> well, let's see. Hey, people people say I don't have an accent oh, anymore. What are you talking about? A boot. <laughs> what are you so, talking about? Oh, sorry, about it. <laughs> no, but I'll just tell you, man, uh, thanks for having me, Vince. It's been a blast. And oh, thanks we'll for plugging my stuff we'll on Facebook, again. Sean Carson Country Music, the new single, Father's Love. <laughs> what else did you cover? Um, <laughs> Sponsored by Jack Daniels and cigarettes. Sponsored by Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> and if, Lights. if you learned anything from this podcast, don't hit 
Merle Haggard's knee. Whew, whatever oh. you do. Oh, is he still dead? He is. Okay. I think you. that's what pushed him. That's a great way to end this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, folks, y'all get on SoundCloud or iTunes or TuneIn Radio. Anywhere you can find podcasts, this thing should be there. Music and Memories. We appreciate you should guys. should be there. Yeah, it should be there. <laughs> it should if be. If it's not, uh, message me and I'll, I I'll send be you a damn looking link. I should be better too, but yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Go share this thing if you can. We appreciate it. Love you, Sean Carson. Thank you, Vince. Thanks for having me, buddy. Thanks for joining us for the latest installment of Music and Memories with your host, Vince Moreno. Visit VinceMoreno.net for show dates, music, and more. 